Hello and welcome to Paris Set Me Free mini photo tutorials. This, as you can see, is a photograph which fits very nicely into my chosen theme for my photographic life. You can see that it's Notre Dame and I was actually waiting at a, an almost ridiculously early hour to start a photo tour with someone, uh, a new friend from Croatia who was here on business as he often is and saw my site and said right I'm going to treat myself to a, a wander around Paris taking photographs uh, so that's what we did he had the morning free so I suggested an early start in between 8 and 8.30 I think he uh, flipped thinking what is going on here and uh, anyway agreed to uh, a compromise 8.15 and as I was waiting it, it was a weekday so uh, but it's in winter so you can see that the sky is still just just starting to uh, to lighten up uh, it wasn't night by by any stretch of the imagination but it was still not really uh, bright daylight and I arrived a few minutes early and decided to take a couple of shots as I was waiting now as I, I mentioned in an earlier uh, tutorial the front couple of elements of my lens fell out my beautiful Nikon 18 to 200 millimeter lens fell out and smashed on the floor recently so I was without my my usual baby and I borrowed a, a little point and shoot almost uh, compact camera but uh, this isn't a bad thing because you should train yourself to to take nicely composed photographs with whatever you've got to hand uh, really it's not an excuse to say I haven't got a, a fantastic camera because sometimes the results can be just as good or in terms of quality obviously the actual quality of the picture uh, technical quality won't be as good but um, that doesn't change what you pointed at so if you pointed at something nice you'll still get a nice photograph this is what I pointed it at just to see what happened very often the camera sees things in a way that you don't in other words you can look at a a, a pretty grey miserable looking scene and I noticed this just yesterday as well and uh, the camera will do something strange for example yesterday I was on a shoot uh, with someone and we were looking at some arches in the rain it was uh, night was coming on and it looked a pretty miserable shot all pretty mushy tones of browny grey took the shot lo and behold within in the middle of the arches where there was artificial light it was bright orange and outside the arches which were in the daylight were quite a strong blue so you can never tell this is what I got let me just show you the original the original shot is this so you can see that I haven't really changed it that much the colors were already there the lovely oranges uh, blue in the river and and just the top of the sky there you can see it's not particularly sharp so it did need sharpening up a bit and the colors needed bringing out so I ended up with this which I think is gorgeous really um, it's uh, it's not a it's not a necessarily it's a shot that I took in a couple of couple of seconds really um, propped myself my elbows on the edge of the bridge to to try and reduce camera shake as much as possible and but the scene was there it just had to be nicely composed and and captured the light early in the morning as as uh, late at night not late at night um, as the sun's going down is often much richer and if you get this combination of the sky but you've which is has natural daylight but it's still not not very bright with this combination of artificial light you can often get a very nice effect now a couple of compositional considerations here I was looking at it I thought okay look I've chopped the bottom this bottom bit off just to below the shadow look there you see the shadow is almost touching but no there's a little bit of blue there just enough so that the shadow doesn't touch uh, in comparison again because I felt this bit here wasn't doing much this bottom strip would be nicer if, if I got rid of it and then it would make these diagonals here this one going to the bridge there and this one here would be would be stronger so that that's what I did there I think it works now I had another compositional 
choice here. I could have chopped the top off here. I could have said to myself, this bit of sky here is doing nothing at all. Uh, let's look at the original. I think I did chop a little bit off. That's the original. Uh, look, look particularly here to see if, to see if I did chop anything off or not. No, in fact, I didn't. I don't think I did. Did I chop anything off the sides? Again, no. No, I don't think I did. So, the reason I didn't chop this off, and I tried. I tried chopping this bit, of, this strip of sky off. And what happened was, uh, the towers of Notre Dame went too close to the top and it didn't look nicely balanced. Look, there's there's more or less the same distance between the shadows here and the bottom. Oops, pressed the button by mistake. And the towers and the top. There's slightly more t above, which I think is correct because after all, that's the sky. The sky goes on woo, way up uh, for forever. Whereas this, this isn't the sky, it's limited. And eventually, if we went down a bit further, you'd see the edge of the bridge. So I think it's right that there's a bit more space here for these to shoot off there than there is below it, but it's almost identical. Another thing was, there's this window here. Now just have a look at it in the original again. There it is. Well, it looks pretty mushy. That's why it definitely needed cleaning up a bit. But what this does is it reflects the sky and it reflects this morning light. And I think it's an important element, this little bit here, because it, it tells you the light's coming up here. It's reflecting, the sky's reflecting on this and bouncing back to you, the viewer. And I didn't want to, I could have chopped it off, but I did, I tried and I didn't like it. I like the fact that that is up there and it's also another interesting little thing. This is somebody's beautiful, probably uh, extremely expensive and exclusive studio with a direct view onto Notre Dame. Maybe it's an artist. So they've got these big windows letting all that lovely light in and it just uh, adds to the, the legend and, and just makes you wonder who on earth could <laughs> afford to have this uh, amazing uh, loft, as they probably call it. Um, there's also a nice perspective there, zooming in towards, which is actually dead center of the picture, but it doesn't matter. Notre Dame is top left if you're one of these people who obsesses over the rule of thirds, so <laughs> that fits in reasonably well. And you've got these lovely lines zooming in, great perspective, vanishing point to this uh, white, horrible white van by the looks of it, if you look closely. But all of these lines go in, look, this one there, bam, the top of the wall, bam, the edge of these buildings, zoop, the ed top of these buildings, zoop, the edge here where you can see the uh, the bookinist. These are things which open up and people sell books and magazines and old posters on the edge of the Seine there. And then down here, look, you've got the light which has been brought out by my post-processing which was necessary. Look, look, look how mushy this is before I cleaned it up. You see, it's really mushy and it doesn't doesn't do the photo justice. Here you can see these these uh, sort of tunnely, rather sinister holes in the wall there, suggesting that there's a life underneath uh, the road here, which there is indeed, and the light coming out onto the the cobblestones of the one of the beautiful romantic Paris walks along there. Again, those lines, the line, the water line, and even the shadow, the the edge of the shadow of the wall in the water, going towards this central point, which is a bridge. So um, so there it is, what, what was taken extremely quickly, just as I was waiting for my, my uh, client, um, has actually, on a, on a camera which I would be embarrassed to, to be seen walking around with, um, well, that's a bit snobbish to say that, but uh, it's not what I usually had in my hands, but who cares, here's a nice shot, I didn't have to, because I was quite a distance away from the, the subject, I didn't have to have any worries with this parallax, this zooming up to the towers. What I'm trying to say is the towers look reasonably square because it's taken from a distance. And um, and there it is. Almost a postcard shot from uh, a stolen moment taken quite quickly. So that's it. Um, did I say that you can see a high quality version of this on the blog? Parasetmefree.blogspot.com. Thanks for visiting and see you next time. Bye bye. Depuis que je suis à Paris, le jour et la nuit, je suis gris. J'ai compris la douceur de vivre. Je suis fou de joie, je suis ivre. Depuis que je suis à Paris.